We have uh, Professor Obiora Okonkwo, is the, he's the spokesman of the Airline Operators of Nigeria and Chairman of the United Nigeria Airlines. So thank you so much for joining us uh, on Newsnight. Well, thank the, you for having me. Yes, great. Well, the, the last time we had you here, you actually uh, raised uh, issues against uh, the idea of uh, Nigeria Air partnering with the Ethiopia Airlines. You still maintain that uh, position. Why exactly? Yeah, let me make it clear. Right. Contrary to what the minister said mm. and the way you slightly put it, mm. airline operators of Nigerians are not against Nigerian air. They're not against people coming together to do business. But what we're saying is that the thing about Nigerian air is shoddy. It's not clear. Their intentions are not genuine. And what been vindicated today by what happened? It's a joke taken too far. We've said here that there's nothing Nigeria in Nigerian air. There's mm. nothing. nothing. There's Nigeria. nothing Nigeria, Nigeria in Nigeria air. Mm. Oh yes, there's nothing like that. We're in court, and we have documents about this 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 charade called Nigerian air. You'll be so ashamed being a Nigerian. What have you brought before the court? We have found there really that. This is an attempt by somebody or some people somewhere trying to hang on that name of Nigeria to take over the business of aviation in this country. Ethiopian Air is an operator which they have mentioned. They've talked about $215 million of whose money. If it's an equity of Ethiopian airline, the money would have been deposited in the Central Bank of Nigeria. So who paid $250 million? We have other partners in the business, MRS, NACO. These guys are not aware of this business. They are not interested. So something is happening somewhere. And besides, if after eight years of talk about Nigerian air, and what we could shamelessly see today is an old Ethiopian airline aircraft registered in Ethiopian uh, number et APL. One aircraft. Oh, Jesus. What is it all about? You know, you know I, I, I'm happy it, it is it's you, so, it's you, such you, an absurd. It's a good thing that you are an operator. I'm going to apologize. Yeah, you're, 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 you're an operator. And yes. You say so many things are, you know, fuzzy, foggy, and unclear. Mm. Oh, and, yes. and uh, apart from having one aircraft uh, <laughs> at the tarmac, tell us what exactly are we dealing with when we say, it is registered, you know, uh, as an Ethiopian airline, but mm -hmm. what we saw there on the body... Is a Nigerian air. Nigerian air. Well, it is a Nigerian air, and I can tell you that this was decorated to confuse Nigerians and some people, because Nigeria has no stake on this aircraft. It is mandatory in law, regulatory agency NCA, and ACAO, law for any aircraft to be registered to be Nigerian aircraft. It must have 5N, the Nigerian registration number. Mm. It must be registered. And you, uh, it can only be registered. So that's the prefix it, given yeah, to Nigeria. Oh, yes. Mm. If it can only be registered, either that you bought it outrightly or you have a dry lease on it. Not if you are having uh, a, 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 a wet lease. So for that reason, it can be registered in your name as a Nigerian carrier. But none of this is the case because this, our investigation has shown that none of the document of this aircraft is with NCA. They just took off in Ethiopia and landed there. And besides, for you to do this kind of show of shame, you must have got into the stage five of your AOC. AOC process has stage five. First stage, you have to express your interest to, uh, to, to have AOC. The second stage is that they will review what they call PASI, your application AOC to know the air, air operating, operating certificate. certificate right. yeah. mm -hmm. So the second stage is that the NCA will review your application, evaluate it, and if it is okay, then you can submit your manuals. That is, your manuals are every other thing about the specification, the SOP, and all that and all that. And the second stage, is that 
they will inspect your locations of operations to make sure it's according to the standard. Then the fifth and final stage is fly demonstration and operation. This AOC process of the SOCO Nigerian Air is still in stage one. The reason being that the minister and his co-travelers do not want to go through the process. Thanks to NCA, part of the things we are struggling for here is that when we talk about AOC, it's like you've gone to a university, passed mm -hmm. your degree, and given a certificate. If your university process has some shady issues about credibility and integrity, that your certificate will be questionable worldwide. So what are Aviation the implications now for, for uh, Nigeria Air since airline operators like yourselves are not buying in uh, you know, to this? And the, the point you made earlier about um, Ethiopia Air's stake in this uh, project, about 49%. Uh, who has the remaining 51% stake? Well, what I was trying to say here right. is that part of our concern is that if the minister had succeeded, thanks to NCA that resisted, mm -hmm. that means the world, aviation is a global village. Right. It's a world market. So they would have been questioning the credibility of our LOC. So we can't fly into their country and all that. Mm -hmm. But the NCA has stood their ground. In terms of Ethiopian airline, they say they have 49%. Our grandfather right in Nigeria, that is our airspace. If you have mm -hmm. to sell it to anybody, you should have about $300 billion. Because we have 200 and something million population. And then we, even the Ethiopian airline, Nigerian travelers consider about 40 to 50% of their travelers worldwide. So as of today, we have not been told how much they invested. They are 49% of what we do not know. Mm -hmm. So another thing also we find out from their business plan is that the Ethiopian airline has written in a document signed by the minister as a business plan that they are coming to kill the operators of in Nigeria, that Nigeria needs only one airline. And they're doing and, that and by starting that for, for a fact. It's, it's in the court, it's there, the documents are there. It's not our document. It's what they presented to Nigeria. It's written, they were specific that they will use predatory price in the first six months. The first six, the predatory price means that if you are charging 50,000 from Lagos mm. to Abuja, they will start with 15,000. And do you know why they should do that? Because the government of as the SADI had granted them 15 years tax break and they had indemnified all the loans they would take anywhere in the world. But, but, that means they could wake up and go and take two billion US dollars quick, loan quick, quickly, and yeah. then they would take Nigerian government to court to pay them debt. Let, let me take you back a bit quickly yes. here, Professor mm. Okonkwa, and it has to do with the <coughs> stages you painted. Five, oh, yeah. right, stages. five stages. Yes. And we, we haven't <coughs> really got into stage two. Doesn't this <coughs> border on safety, air safety? This is all we are struggling, what we are fighting for. Thank God NCAA has refused to be cajoled. And for that reason, some of the strong actors who said no have been removed from NCA. The NCA DG merely survived because there is a new inclusion in the recently approved NCA Act mm. that said before you remove the DG, you must get the consent of the Senate. Otherwise, a lot of people had paid the price. But we should be very, they are heroes. And for us in the industry, they are saving us because recent, there are six operators in Nigeria with IOSA certificate. That is, the world standard has certified that your operations is of international standard. There's no other country in the world that has that number. So right. we want to maintain the credibility and integrity. And so, airline is about safety. So they have edited everything we have, audited it, and we are top class. And the issue is this, what they do not understand and what the NCA and us are fighting, that all the processes that lead to this must be documented. Mm -hmm. And ICAO, which is starting to, uh, to audit NCA in the next week, is coming in to check the papers. And if anything is found and there is comma in certificate pro certification process of NCA, it will affect the entire industry. These are part of the things we are That's fighting. why I ask you about mm. the implications. Uh, now that the eagle has landed, <laughs> more or less, I mean, you have Nigeria Air, air on no. ground in Nigeria. What next? I no. mean, where do we go from here? It, are you saying... It is, dead, is it, it is dead on arrival. This aircraft you see here is actually on its way to Turkey. By this time to, tomorrow, 
If you go to the airport, you will now say it is gone. This is the fact. Gone. When, the, when, do you, when you say it's gone, it came in for this show of shame. You know, it's a king. To, it's, 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 it's hard to believe that it's, you know, it's, it's. No, no, it's hard to believe it. But it's akin to, you know, fraud. You oh, know, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to. I want to. It's, it's, it's a scam. But quickly, you have to call it by the name. It's a scam. You have a new government coming in. Is there a conversation that you hope that the new government will look into to make to write what you think is wrong? Well, we are only hoping that this new government business-like and that they will understand that as Nigeria all over are celebrating the coming into stream of Dangote refinery which Nigerian government could not do for how many decades without oil. This is no time for anybody to say Nigeria is going into national terror. It's no more than anywhere in the world. Well, it's a, nobody, I mean, it's no, a nobody public, does private that. Uh, initiative. The public private initiative is that I had said in my news release why are the other partners not talking? As a matter of fact, if you go by the books, the government has only 5%. They are minority partners. We don't hear any partners talk. We don't see them. They are the people who will be coming to tell, why is it the minister? Why is he so desperate to get this thing? There must be something he wants to justify. Or, on the other hand, he might want to tie the hands of the incoming government to believe that this has come into through. And besides, the rule that, is that you yeah. must have not less than three Aircrafts, even for you to have uh, AOC. And that's just one. Just and that's one. just one. And mm -hmm. if you are coming because Nigerian operators are not competent, and after eight years, all you can achieve in your own startup process is to bring into the country an old aircraft. But we have old aircraft that do not even belong to Nigeria or belong to Nigeria. Well. So, all, but we right. have Nigerian operators collectively with over 100 aircraft, which in their own five-year plan, they plan to bring about 35. And within these 100 air, over 100 aircraft, some of them are new. APIS has 30 aircraft signed up. United Nigeria is signing up aircraft this by July in Paris uh, Air Show. Is and the whole lot of people are coming is, on. Is what is the whole thing about? Is there anything that may have advised the uh, the aviation minister, Hadi Sirika, to go out instead of uh, seeking partnership with domestic airlines uh, like yours? I don't think any, any domestic airline, like any other business, we want to partner with the government of Nigeria. What Why we not? want, what we, the, the domestic airline need, which could be also an agenda for incoming government, is support. The support, or even Ethiopian airline could have not survived with the support of the government. They had billions of years of support after COVID. United Arab Emirates had over seven billion US dollars support after COVID. United Air, American Air, they all been British Airways had billions of pounds after COVID. They are all being supported by government. The only thing the Nigerian operators had after COVID, the entire aviation ecosystem, from car hire to handler, four billion naira. It does not even pay salary of right. one of the company. So we don't need partnership with the government. We need the government to support us. If you want to make up some, some, some funds available, not grants, we don't want any grants, we mm. don't want any free money, then you have to make us have access to a special foreign exchange window. And then this is all we need. And we're doing that. And despite all this lack of support, it's on record, Nigeria aviation industry has been the fastest survivor in the world, except only behind Colombia, after COVID. Right. And we, these operators that are being cajoled today, had grown the industry from 5 million passengers to 20 million. That has made it the fastest growing domestic aviation industry in the whole world. Very they deserve respect mm. rather than just this. For, you ask me what may be the minister's intention. I don't read mind, but there's nothing genuine in this. It's personal. Honestly speaking, very and, quickly, and, um, very, quickly. very I mean, soon Nigerians will we, we know more. Your association of airline operators, operators actually yeah. claim that the firm that served as transaction advisor was incorporated in March of 2022, uh, last year, and has links with uh, the aviation minister himself. Do you have... Um, the, the facts are there. The documents are there. You can, you can easily, just like this aircraft that landed, if you go into the internet, you find that this aircraft 
flew for Ethiopian airline from Tel Aviv to Addis Ababa a few days ago. And they just, that thing is not actually painting. If you know, if you're an aviation business, you know that it's just a sticker. <laughs> and it leaves tomorrow and they remove it. And they will become Ethiopian airlines. So what's your lawyer saying? Because uh, listen to the uh, report by Mary uh, saying that mm -hmm. uh, it, there was a court order. So this is against the court order. Well, the, the, the problem we're having is that the matter is in court. Yeah. And the minister and his people have not even come to defend themselves. They're only coming to give frivolous reasons. And all of a sudden, we woke up one morning and hear that they have transferred the case in Abuja. We sued the chief judge of Nigeria. The case is back to Lagos. So for this, the lawyers will do the necessary thing is, is a violation of court order. And it's very annoying that this court order is being violated with our minister sat next to him by Ethiopian airline chairman. This is a country that did not even allow Nigeria to fly through Ethiopia to go and rescue our people in Uganda, in, in, uh, in Sudan. In Sudan. Mm. And then they were there. It's an insult to our sovereignty. It should not be allowed. We, we feel ashamed. You know, and don't forget also, this, what has happened, this Ethiopian ally has been hovering around Nigeria, trying to latch on to some corrupt, unpatriotic people to exploit us. The first person that approached was Epis. They had offered to give him over 30 million US dollars every month to operate under, under him. Out of his patriotic zeal, he refused because he knows the Im negative impact he should have on the Nigerian airline. But somebody else somewhere may have seen or heard about it and wanted to do it in his own way. That is what is happening. We are supporting, yeah. as we speak today, there are about 20 AOC documents under process in this year. In the last six months, two airlines have joined, Canem Air, Rano Air, and we are operating under one umbrella. We want as many as possible if they can, but we don't want the one that is coming to wreck us. We don't want the one that will come in to shame the integrity and sovereignty of this country. Ethiopian Air do not mean, mean well. They are just coming to mess with us. All right. They're already having too much landing rights, and they have not given us one single one to Ethiopia. They've not allowed any Nigerian airline to land in Ethiopia, but they land three times every day in this country, Enugu, Lagos, I don't even know if they're going to, to Kano. Well, so these are the things we are fighting for, and not that we, mm. we, we don't want the Ethiopian airline. No, we don't think they're genuine, we don't think they're mean, well, we don't think this process is good for this country. F don't forget that recently we heard about foreign airlines asking for 800 million mm, Dollars unpaid, or they'll leave. But if you know right. how much they have been paid, this is unpaid. You had recently about judgment debt that Nigeria is owed. Mm. This thing will only lead to that because it's a scam. We could, if, if we the could government give you all night to talk yes, about absolutely. those things, but we'll really I have, have to, to come live back. With that. <laughs> absolutely. But thank yes, you for, you for, for giving us some position to hear from us. Thank but, you so much. But, but you know, we we are happy that NCA has stood the test of the time. Right. We are happy that they have survived this uh, stress. Thank you very and much. And I can we'll tell you that Nigerian Airways is, 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 is gone. Thank is, you very much, Professor uh, yes. Obiora Okonkwo, his guest, uh, of course, a uh, spokesperson, spokesman of the airline <laughs> operators of Nigeria. Thank you very much for joining us.